All right, I think we can we can get started, right? So, uh, well, I guess good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on on where you are. Feel free to post a message saying where you're from. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's always nice to know uh, uh, where our audience is based. So, you know, like I said, I'm I'm outside Paris. Uh, Lucas, where are you, by the way? So I'm in the mountains in Switzerland. Oh, okay, lucky you. So that's why you have great weather. And Elena? Yeah, I'm in, in Zurich. Okay, Zurich. All right, yeah. Zurich, yeah. All right. Not, not as great as the mountains. But... Uh, no, 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 not as great as Lucas has. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, no, come on. You're making everyone jealous, Lucas. Come on. No, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> so, yeah, welcome, everybody, to... Uh, Welcome. Oh yeah, we have a few few more folks joining. Okay, let's let's give them a few more seconds. You know, everybody's late. You know, after the four p.m. meetings. Story of my life. Yeah. All right. Okay. So welcome everybody. Uh, let's get started. You know, we have uh, quite a few things to cover. Um, so uh, thank you very much to our friends at Witty Works for joining us today. Um, Let's, I guess, first introduce everybody. So my name is Julian. Um, I'm the chief evangelist for Hawking Face outside Paris. And I'm very, very happy to have two, uh, two guests today. Uh, so, um, well, I'll give them an opportunity to, uh, to introduce themselves. So yeah, Elena, tell yeah. us a little bit about you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Elena Nazarenko. I've joined VTWorks as a data scientist and NLP developer a little, a little bit more than one year and a half ago. Uh, prior to VTWorks, I worked as an NLP developer to build chatbot for the tech support center and to improve free text search on the web platform. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a PhD in physics from University of Grenoble Alps in France. And specialize, I yeah, specialized in theoretical and computational physics before, and I worked as a researcher in the in research institute in um, Sweden and Switzerland as a researcher a few years ago. And here in, in works, uh, I'm working on core NLP algorithm for writing assistant VT for inclusive language. So, yeah. All right. So work. machine learning is a hobby for you, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds 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 good enough. Uh, and we have, you know, we're lucky to have uh, Lucas, who's actually uh, one of the co-founders of uh, of WittyWorks. So uh, welcome, Lucas, and tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that's probably the main um, sort of what I bring to this talk here. I'm not a data scientist like <laughs> Elena. Uh, that's why she has the lead data scientist in front, uh, because she's our leading data scientist. Um, yeah, so I'm the CTO and co-founder. I'm originally from Berlin, Germany, uh, but also living in Switzerland. Um, and uh, yeah, so my background is more in the backend development. So um, I work with Elena in tandem to kind of, um, she produces the the data scientist um, results, uh, the algorithms and so on. And then my role is to help her kind of build that into uh, good engineering software principles uh, so that we have a scalable API. All right, sounds good. And, you know, before we uh, we get started with, uh, with the use case, um, yeah, I'll, let, let's talk about WeedyWorks. So, <laughs> You guys have the coolest URL, you know, I have to mention it. Uh, and obviously it's witty.works. So I love that, very clever. Uh, but Lucas, tell us a little bit about uh, about the company, you know, you know, when was it created founded? What's the what's the vision? What's the what's the mission you've uh, you've set for yourselves? Um, let's give us some some background here. Sure. Yeah, so, uh, so WittyWorks was founded in 2018 uh, as a consulting company. Um, and the idea was, uh, or basically the real, it was based on the realization that uh, IT is shaping more and more realities, um, like what we can or cannot do. Uh, but there's a very obvious lack of diversity um, in, uh, in the space. And so the idea of this consulting company was to see what could be done for companies to change in order to become more diverse? And so this is kind of the, the opposite approach that has been taking for some time where people from marginalized communities are taught how they can survive in the current business world. But rather the idea was to 
take the opposite direction. Um, and so um, the initial response was always, well, there are no women, for example, that want to work in IT. And so the first project was then to manually rewrite job ads to make them more inclusive. And then finally in 2019, we decided to actually make that uh, a software product to be more scalable. Um, and so we created uh, a first solution for job ads in uh, German, French, and German. And this was quite successful, but uh, we realized actually the scope should be much bigger because it doesn't really help people if the job ad uh, is inclusive if then the rest of their work experience isn't. And so we created um, Witty, the digital writing assistant, um, that actually can work in any scope when you're writing an email, internally, externally, on LinkedIn, in Gmail, um, and of course also with job ads, um, that it works as a browser extension that you can install um, and then give you feedback. But most importantly, it doesn't just work as a spell checker um, that sure. just tells you what you did wrong and how you should correct it, but it also explain it, explains it to you because the idea is actually we want to use language kind of as a as the point in time where people get educated about the biases that they have learned through socialization, through our language that have been embedded in our culture, and then hopefully also change their behaviors in other contexts. Like, for example, you get feedback, you write a sentence like, the one-eyed among the blind, you get feedback that this is an ableist phrase mm, uh, sure. because you are equating uh, vision ability with something bad. And then maybe next time you organize a team event, you're like, ah, okay, I got this feedback. Maybe I should think about my options, how I organize my team event. Makes sense. Okay, yeah, that's that's a, that's an interesting angle. Uh, pretty good, pretty clever. Um, so of course we're going to look at some examples. We're going to dive into the the solutions that you build. I just want to take uh, you know 30 seconds to talk about Hugging Face, uh, although this is really today about about WeWork. So. Hugging Face is um, trying to build the best ML community out there, uh, a central place where all of us can uh, can come and find and discover great machine learning models that we can use in our um, uh, in our own projects, and of course also share models. And you know, people call us the GitHub of machine learning. I think it's the fair analogy. You go to GitHub to find uh, some code and libraries and tools and share your own and well uh, you can do the same for machine learning models and data sets on the on the hugging face hub at huggingface.co so just some quick numbers uh, as of today we have over 130,000 models um, all open source you can download them in a, literally one line of code and, and use them in your own projects. And, and Elena will tell us in a, in a few minutes how she did that. Uh, we have over 20,000 data sets, again, all open source that you can use for whatever purpose, uh, maybe fine tune some of our uh, models or, and, and again, build great things. Um, and just to give you a sense of uh, you know popularity, we have over 10,000 companies and organizations who actually contribute models to and data sets to the hub. Uh, we're one of the most popular open source projects um, uh, ever. Uh, I think our uh, Transformers library just passed the 80,000 uh, uh, GitHub star mark uh, last week. Uh, so looking forward to hitting 100K. Um, still a bit of a bit of a way to go here. Uh, so yeah, very very proud to 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 be serving the community with the open source models and data sets. Um, and today we're really here to talk about um, the uh, the way that WittyWorks has leveraged Hugging Face models and actually more than models, Hugging Face support as well to uh, to build their application and get uh, in production. So before we dive into the machine learning part, let's talk about the problem that uh, that you've been trying to solve. So tell us a little bit about the problem statement. Uh, Lucas, you started to explain it, um, but can we can we dive in a little more into the into the, the problem, uh, what's difficult about it um, and, and how you started investigating? Uh, yeah, I, I can probably do it. Yeah, um, know, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, when I joined VTWorks, uh, VT as a writing assist, uh, assistant didn't exist yet, and uh, we need to start from scratch. Uh, it was like initial product that Lucas mentioned that was based on regular expression, uh, and it's like it was specified for the job, it's analysis. Um, and when we started, we started with a simple approach, so it was good to start with simple approach. Uh, we use transfer learning. Uh, we, we use a spicy library, German in English, uh, for analyzed text. Uh, and uh, this uh, spicy pre-trained models, uh, we transform all words from the text to the lemma form. And like we do, like perform linguistic analysis, extract any linguistic features from the text. Is it plural, for singular, gender of the word, part of the speech tax? We also do, like we uh, like we label like is it pronoun, verb, noun, adjectives, uh, and uh, do like word dependency labels. So in this step, uh, we also do like name entity recognition to extract geographical location, organization name, people number from user text if we need. And after that, in the second step, we search through our inclusive and non-inclusive uh, knowledge base if any of the words that we detected uh, it belongs to our uh, knowledge base or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, and we also filter uh, these words like using our specific linguistic label to be sure that we highlight like uh, proper like noun or uh, verb or whatever. Uh, and then we. Uh, yeah, we highlight words and then we show alternatives. I don't know, probably Lucas, you can show probably. Yeah, demo. can we do can we do a quick demo, yeah. uh, Lucas? Yeah. Uh, can you? Sure. Let me let me give you the screen back for a second. Yeah. Okay. And and we'll show the actual thing and then we'll talk about the machine learning um, yeah. uh, that powers it. Okay. Let me share. Oh, you see the yeah. activity we screen. Can, so yeah, we can see the screen. So, so basically, you can see this is just the text area. If I click into it, uh, then it calls back to our API um, and highlights specific words. Um, we can see here, this is kind of the same similar example to what uh, Elena was showing. So here, the word fossil is using as a derogatory slur, essentially. Right? And here, it's, uh, you know, you're referring to the fossil fuel industry. Of course, you can have different opinions of how the fossil fuel industry, but it's definitely not a the derogatory term per se, right? So we don't sure. highlight it, sure. uh, but other words, so kind of the obvious one, guys, uh, for example, people, and you can just click and accept mm. an alternatives. Um, we can actually also create our own. You can, as a user, you can create your own language rules. So for example, we say witty works, we always capitalize the W. So that's why we have a rule. If you write witty works lowercase, you can just click and you accept it. Um, and yeah, and basically you can, configure um, lots of things like if you want to use uh, singular they um, in German it's, it's gendered language so there are different approaches how to sure. degender it uh, we have support for so-called plain language and different types of um, yeah configurations are okay. available pretty cool all right so yeah you know very straightforward and and you know, if we, we all use the uh, you know similar tools, I mean, I, I use uh, Grammarly a lot, uh, which which is also one of our customers. So very very you know very intuitive um, user experience here. So of course now we want to know how this works, and uh, let me share my screen again. Give me a second here. Okay. And um, yeah. Oh, oh, give me a second. Yeah, you should see the screen now. So. So Elena, you started telling us about the, the initial approach. Yeah, initial, um, yes, initial. So, so yes, it's like tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yes, an initial approach, as I as I told, so it was it was based like on pre-trained spicy models, uh, and uh, on and the core algorithm was based on lemmatization. In principle, yeah. it works very well. Uh, I would say like currently we have like uh, two thousand to like. 2,500 uh, 2, probably words and idiom in uh, German and probably the same amount in English. Okay. And I would say like for the 85% uh, eight, of the whole vocabulary, this approach, very basic approach works quite perfectly. Uh, however, we have uh, like context dependent non-inclusive uh, words. So you, you can show like in previous slides. Sure. Uh, uh, let me go back to so, the yeah, oh. so, like, yeah, yeah. So just, yeah, so for example, like 
uh, like for example, second example, you uh, you feel you will have a flexible schedule, and you should keep your schedule flexible. So do, so I don't know. Do you feel a difference? So it's like in one uh, uh, case we need to highlight flexible. That uh, yeah. You should keep. In another case, we don't need to select, uh, highlight flexible. Uh, okay. And uh, since we, here we have like context-dependent um, case, so we can't just do like uh, lemmatization uh, or whatever. And uh, the first approach, what we thought, we can just uh, uh, use like uh, we thought that we can use like vanilla uh, transformer like bird mm -hmm. uh, yep. for uh, yes and uh, do like uh, generate like embedding vector of every word depending uh, in sentence and then uh, only keep embedding of the problem words token and calculate like uh, uh, cosine similarity angles between like this problem words with our uh, like uh, benchmarks but uh, what we saw so we saw that um, Actually, we, when we only do like um, uh, word, embed, uh, word embedding, not like taking like the whole sentence embedding, so the accuracy was not very high. So the problem was that in uh, when in the vector space, it was like overlap. So you have like uh, for every word might have like different meaning. Of course. Yes, and in some case, this like it's uh, and if you you transform these words. Even even in sentence uh, to the to the vector and uh, in in C in the vector space and there is like overlap even if it's if even these words have different meaning it might be anyway overlap between them uh, and the the highest accuracy that we can get with this approach it was like uh, like zero point seven yeah which yeah, which, is seven, yeah, which is yeah 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 so yeah, yeah it really means case, yeah, it I mean, means it's yeah, case, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, one word like, out of four is not exactly up, right. Exactly. So it's yeah, that's still, well, that's still too low. So what's the yeah. so what's the um, what's the solution to that? And I guess the you know the solution is move on to uh, to y yes, different transformer uh, models. So yes, exactly. Uh, yes, and tell then, us a little uh, bit about that. Yes, and then uh, 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 we uh, we moved to. Uh, we, we realize that we need to transfer from. Uh, we need to try at least not like just using like word embedding approach. We need uh, to try to use like a sentence uh, transformers. So that like mm -hmm. when you uh, um, uh, you do like word, um, uh, you don't do like embedding of the whole sentence. Uh, and uh, for this approach, so yes, you can use. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so in this approach, so it's like uh, you extract em embedding of the whole sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, so I would say like there is like, no, previous slide, still previous oh, slide. Okay. Yes, uh, in this approach, we need like so two two levels of uh, separa two separation models. So the main principle, we use transformers uh, model to extract uh, word em embedding or sentence embedding and, and use this embedding as an input for the classifier. Uh, and we, we realize that we need to create like this uh, kind of sentence classifier, not just a word-based classifier. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we, in the beginning, we tried uh, we tried like uh, in uh, Hugging Face, you have like a sentence transformer, mm -hmm. uh, big big library. And I think we tried like uh, this is like this is our final uh, results. But we, mm -hmm. in the beginning, we, we only tried like sentence transformer libraries, and we tried I think uh, Roberta and Beard sentence transformers, uh, uh, but then we realize that in principle it works mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to achieve like uh, high accuracy or better accuracy uh, we need uh, like so for for one word we need about 100 sentences ah okay so now that so, i can see the yeah. problem that shows up right Yes, exactly. You need to and, build a, a, yeah. a really yes. huge data set for this. Yes, exactly. And and then we also and uh, also these context dependent uh, sentences they they really need like lingui linguist to uh, label this data because hmm. I, I in the beginning I tried to label this data by myself, but then uh, <laughs> yeah well. Yeah, well. Well, you said you said yeah. two thousand words, yeah. right? Yeah, About I two thousand words like, and. If you need a hundred sentences, that's two hundred thousand uh, yeah. 
uh, sentences you need to build and label, and and then you have to do it for uh, two languages. So that's exactly, not yeah. that's not it's, very very fun. So it's not really scalable. Yeah, and also our linguist, uh, she's she's like, um, uh, it's also expensive because it's like we we pay her pay per hour, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's <laughs> yeah, okay. also yeah, it's, it's also kind of you need to kind of balance what uh, how you yes yeah. So do, sets, doing yeah. the usual thing, you know, build a data set, run a large uh, supervised learning classification job, it wasn't an option. So what, yes, exactly. what, else, yeah. what else did you do? Uh, yes, and then uh, um, we Hagen face, uh, we, we have like uh, our like uh, uh, mentor Hagen face like uh, uh, Florin, and he he suggests us to said that he said that there is like a very nice. Even we already use like Hagen face, but we didn't know that it exists actually. He mm -hmm. said that there is like framework which called like set fit. Uh, yes. And uh, yes, and it's like it's doing like in principle what you uh, what you need. So it's classify. Uh, you, you can build like classifier based uh, on a semantic uh, um, similarity. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but you don't need to have uh, like a huge amount of the data. So and uh, yeah. So I, I guess yeah. let's 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 zoom in on this for a second. So. Yeah. Uh, Setfit is an open source library that uh, that was built by Hugging Face with uh, the help of uh, other researchers, and it uses a technical few shot learning. So, tell us a little bit about few shot learning and how it's different from, I guess, traditional supervised learning. Uh, yeah. So, in, so Setfit, it's in principle, it's also based on the sentence transformers. Yes. So it's, yes. It's, it's the same. It's the same approach that we tried to apply before. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> since like it's, uh, uh, but it uh, the the model itself, I think it's it's uh, not big as uh, like sentence transformers as a Roberto or whatever. So you need less uh, computational. Uh, uh, uh time to, to to train in the built -in model and the the most advantage was like it's a free uh, it's a, just a few shots so that means that you don't need 100 sentence per per word uh is uh we use what we use finally we end up to have like let's say like 20 sentence per word but uh, i would say like it's like maximum usually mm -hmm. we have like 15 15 sentence you might use less but uh yeah i mean 15 sentence it's i mean it's very good because even uh, our language is able to to do it like this 15 15 sentence and when i'm talking about 15 sentence it's it's uh, all whole uh, like 20 sentences it's a whole whole data set it's like also all the sentence we use for for uh, we for uh, for uh, train validate and test so it's like to uh, we divide this uh, uh, this uh, data set and uh, yeah it's enough it's more than enough uh, i would say uh, and it's very easy to uh, kind of update if something wrong i mean it's just need to add one one sentence more. I mean, sure. uh, uh, finally, finally, we, we add two. Uh, uh, so, which is like, um, uh, uh, like, which is we need to highlight, and another we don't need highlight. Just to have, because what we also see is that it's good to have like balanced data set, uh, mm -hmm. because you you can't you it, it, it's it's not good to have like uh, eighteen uh, like uh, sentences that you don't need to highlight it in only one that you highlighted or opposite. I mean. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we were trying to build kind of a balanced data set, so, sure. so yeah. So, yeah, at the end um, of the day, you save a ton of time and money uh, on, yeah, uh, exactly. by, by not having to build that crazy large data set. And yeah. I guess also the the training time is, uh, yes, is quite exactly. shorter. Um, it's, it's much shorter, yes, yeah. yes, yes, exactly. It's so, what is I, I would say like two main advantage uh, advantage of the set fit uh, library. That and and it's also it's not just this and also uh, it's set fit library. It doesn't look like a real. Uh, I mean, library that you get to use. I mean, when you have like a lot of methods and attributes or some, something like that, uh, it has just uh, I would say like two main class like set fit mm -hmm. model, set fit trainer. Yeah, it's and, very simple. Uh, and it's, yeah, I it's love very it. simple. Yeah, I mean, it's it looks. Like uh, it's yeah. not like of course it's not like two two line codes, but it's much less you need to code. I mean, it's like because it's, yeah, it's very short. It's, 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 yeah, it's very short. The set fit model, it's like a, a kind of a wrapper that's combined like pre uh, you 
protein and body from scent and transformer and then also like a, a, a set fit head so you also have this like i mean it's amazing i really like it so we also save time we, we also yeah, exactly. save coding and and debugging time so yeah it, yes exactly yes exactly if set you fit, never yeah, yeah, yeah if you never yeah. looked at uh, set fit yeah. for uh for, for you know text classification tasks i really encourage you to to give it a shot i mean you in a in minutes you know or you can you can really train yeah. high quality models and mm -hmm. you know it's i think it's a great um it's a great tool to add to the uh, to the machine learning toolbox so um so at the end of the day okay uh you know you you build a, a small a smallish data set yeah you uh uh you know we working with our experts you experiment with a few sentence transformers and and then yeah. i guess you settle for uh mpnet which we see here yeah yes 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 this was, was i i think final result but we tried like uh also paraphrase, paraphrase i think mpnet uh, then also i think um uh, distill uh, distill roberta and probably distill bird mm -hmm. but i don't know this like uh, i would say like this family of uh, mpnet i think it's quite yeah yeah i think it's much better quality yeah. and regarding like uh, this is like a, a body uh, of our classifier and uh, and for for the header uh well in principle we try like we, we just we actually in the beginning we just tried like like logistic regression and uh kna and both work quite well kna a little bit better and we we just uh, like uh, yeah stick to kna and uh, that's mm -hmm. it that's, so it's very i would say like basic uh classifier well, yeah. <laughs> header and yeah so one thing we didn't mention because you know it's it's obvious but i think it's important is the the model should be fast right i mean yeah. uh when uh, when we saw in, in lucas's demo you know you have a full page of text and of course no one wants to wait for three minutes you know it needs to be very very snappy so uh did, did you do any particular work here uh well finally we, we don't we didn't need to optimize this because it can even uh, it was very fast uh how how it was i mean okay. we, 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 yeah i mean we uh, we trained the model uh, like on azure and we deploy mo model on azure uh yeah yeah i mean it, uh yeah, I wouldn't say that we really do like okay. some. Yeah, well, pieces. it's also yeah, one of I the mean, benefits of yeah, sentence transformers. Benefits, they yes, tend to yes. be, they tend to be smaller than the you know the, the typical transformers. So so they work mm -hmm. they work pretty well. So I guess um, you know, the the what? How did we help? Uh, so the model and the library helped, but it's it's not all of it, right? Uh, there was a, a human element <laughs> in uh, yeah. in in our collaboration. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I would say, like uh, for for us, the main advantage to collaborating with Hagen Face it was why we started. Why we, we, it was like uh, we really want to have like a deployment of our models because I mean you know it's like um, uh, with the transformers. I mean it's like everybody talking about. Everybody probably played, but. Uh, when you started to ask did they like deploy it's like it's not many cases mm -hmm. uh, and uh yeah and uh also like we also had like and the problem i think with all probably data science projects that's um you it might be like 90 90 percent of models are not deployed in a real mm -hmm. product yeah. uh, because for example we also currently we have uh, we, we had uh, like if you collaboration with, with university uh but it's finally we didn't deploy any models unfortunately yeah but in why we joined the hacking phase we really want to deploy it we really want to to can have kind of results uh and the second uh advantage of the, uh, why we join uh it was like um even when I, I remember when when I just uh, look in a hacking face like a um, website, I, I in the beginning I, I felt lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. well, yeah, yeah, I see what you like, mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, where should I start? I mean, there are, okay, even classify. Okay, let's okay classify. Okay, so so many models. So which approach is better? So you even so it's like you you see it's like you see okay, do I need to to try all these models or all this approach to find? Yeah, I mean, it's like also kind of uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's for us. It's also we. I really appreciate that we we again please guide us through the like the huge amount of the transformer and also kind of always show us the best possible approach that it's also safe a lot of 
like time i would say because it's always good to play with something new of course yeah but then it's like uh, yeah, yeah i mean it's also a question i mean uh, how yeah you, you finally need to deliver something it's not yeah yeah i agree it's that. uh you know sometimes yeah. it's it's obvious which models to use and you can select maybe two three models and and, and you know fine-tune them a little bit and you know it's it's again pretty simple uh to, to pick one but sometimes it's not yeah. and i guess you know like text text classification is uh is one of the biggest uh tasks we have um one of the most popular so we do have a ton of models and depending on the use cases it's it, you know one model could work very well or be you know a poor choice and in this case i think you know sentence transformers were the the perfect solution and uh yeah. but so you know we're happy to to bring this expertise to to customers and 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 help them quickly figure out okay this is the way to go and and get good results uh quickly so speaking of which we didn't give any uh uh we didn't give any uh, actual results so uh, once you know everything was done uh and you you work with the sentence transformer and deployed so what were the the results what was the accuracy of this uh upgraded uh, solution yeah yeah i mean not, yeah currently we have yes you can see accuracy is 0 0.92 uh in principle we can i think we can probably also kind of uh uh optimize it set to uh, 0 0.96 uh mm -hmm. but even right like right now i think it's not quite Perfect, and I also really like that we also have kind of uh, very well established workflow. Mm -hmm. So it's like we create our data sense with real data, uh, like yeah, and then we we uh, uh, convert yeah that covers the most cases. Then uh, we test and train model on uh, Google Colab. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we pushed our model to Hagen Face Hub, and then from the Hagen Face Hub we deployed our model on Azure Cloud and create API, and then we use uh, this API in the current backend solution. So it's like very, like very well, I would say like uh, established workflow now. And uh, yeah, that's it's also good. Uh, I don't know, Lucas, you can show, I don't know, oh, I, for example, uh, or, or here it's like some examples. So it's like um, before that we, for example, we have this false that's how we call it like false positive. When for, the, for example, for the world fossil, we highlight all fossils. It, it, because we, it was not we um, we didn't care about the context. It currently, mm -hmm. we care about the context. Yeah, so, so you can see from the left what was sure. before, sure. and uh, yeah, on the right uh, what is uh, what is after. Uh, yeah, and uh, so yeah, what? Uh, um, so yeah. what kind of um, so what mm -hmm. kind of advice can you give? to uh to developers and data scientists yeah. who are uh, who are facing a similar a similar problem you know exactly. what what do you you know what literally what tips can you share i would say like if you if you need uh, uh, if you need um, text classifier go go and try set fit so it's just amazing how it works. I mean, it's. I think it even might work with like with the zero shot. It's kind of, you can create like some synthetic data and also try. Uh -huh. I, I didn't try like, zero shot. I just read an article. But I mean, it's so amazing how it works. Uh, but I would say like in general, uh, like um, what is good. So uh, uh, like we, we need to make focus on the right thing. So uh -huh. uh, try to find a pre-trained model that fits your case. Uh, mm -hmm. Then me measure the model on your real data. If it's not enough quality uh, accuracy or whatever, if it's yeah, if it's classified, so it's accuracy. If it's not enough, then you fine tune your day, uh, your model. Uh, uh, then you probably uh, deploy the model in production and also see and probably optimize computational performance if ne if needed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's like uh, yeah, so it's so a very it's a very iterative very, uh, process. Yeah, and, right? yeah, exactly. It's very interactive process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I think that's good advice but, because I, I yeah. still, sometimes I meet with with customers and and you know they still have the I would say the old mentality of oh you know we need to analyze the data for two months and then we're going to you know try and model for two months and then maybe we'll train and deploy and it's a very linear thing and and my my concern here is at the end of the day hope if you have all the right options selected at the beginning then yeah maybe after six months you have something that works but if one of your hypotheses is is incorrect you you're wasting months of work 
and, and and that's a shame. And I think the the hugging face way, uh, exactly what you described, which is let's find some pre-trained models, let's evaluate them right away, yeah. see what works, see what doesn't. It, it teaches you things immediately on, well, this is maybe what I should be fine tuning on, right? This part of my data set works, this part of my data set doesn't really work. So maybe I should fine tune on this specifically. And and within a few days, uh, you, you can start learning. And if you use SetFit, then you don't need to build a huge data set either. So the it it just accelerates everything, right? Yes, and right. Yeah. Yes, I, I would say like it's like save time and money actually when you, you, you yeah that's for sure. I what I what I, I would like to also add so what was very helpful for Hugging Face. I really like your uh, newsletter and blog post. That oh, tone yes. of yeah tone of useful information. It's like also also kind of guide you because it's also yeah what what is what is like would I would say like cutting edge. I mean what is better to try right now? I mm. mean what is the yeah I mean it's what's yeah so go go really check like it out. It, yeah. uh, Huggingface.co slash blog, of course. And mm -hmm. yes, there are lots of posts. It's it's very busy and it's it's generally very practical stuff, as you mm -hmm. as you said. It's you know, mm -hmm. we try to have lots of code, lots of examples, lots of tips, yeah. uh yeah. some some more foundational posts from time to time, but generally yeah, it's uh it's code heavy and uh, example heavy. So yeah, thanks yeah. for uh mentioning mm -hmm. that. So, what are what are the next steps? Uh, wh where do you want to take the project uh, after this? Do, do you have more uh, more ideas um, uh, to to improve this? Uh, currently, we have like I would say like three uh, main, main like projects. One is related to uh, we need to improve uh, um, gra grammar, especially in German. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of a gra grammar, uh, sp sp kind of speller checker. So we need to, especially for German, because yeah, sometimes when we propose alternatives, we need uh, to to make it more gram grammatically correct. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, correct. Uh, then we also have a project related uh, to uh, job ads. So it's kind of uh, create a, a, a tool or API that uh, uh, analyze job ads and uh, suggest uh, what should be improved so mm -hmm. not just in, in terms of uh, of the words but also uh, in, uh how how it should looks like the structure of the job ads so it's like our current and going project and then uh, we also have this idea uh, of um, style transfer that's when we can uh, uh, transform like a sentence from non-inclusive to inclusive one, mm -hmm. so but for, for this we need probably to uh, to collect more data. So it's like uh, okay. this kind of stuff, yeah. But this is kind of what, yeah. All right, yeah. We could we could go on forever. You know, I'm keeping an eye on the clock. Okay. I I want to give Lucas an opportunity maybe yeah. to to share some uh, some insights as well on you know the relationship with the uh, with hugging face and you know what's uh, what's coming next for WittyWorks. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take questions. Well, so start thinking about your questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I mean, Elena already uh, kind of explained why we we went with the collaboration with Hugging Face, and and we were still a small startup, right? So we're six people in total, mm -hmm. um, and so obviously it was also a significant investment, and we're kind of like, uh, but we felt this was actually for us the most economical way that Elena gets gets a sparring partner, actually a team of star <laughs> sparring partners, right? Yes. Uh, because you know, you know, whenever you are working on an IT project, you you sometimes get stuck, right? And I, yes. I can I can be a, a a rubber duck, right? But I'm not a data scientist, right? And sure. so <laughs> I think that to me was kind of why I was convinced immediately when Elena said, uh, because even though it was a significant investment, right, we couldn't afford to hire another person, mm -hmm. and so this was actually a, a cheaper way to actually at least get her a little bit of uh, sparring partnership. Um, so that again was probably one of the, the most convincing reasons uh, for making that investment. And maybe one more thing to say about the data. So um, so in our solution, I'm not sure if people notice it, but there's, of co there's also a button ignore. So this is one way how we can actually detect if people say this is a false positive, right? Um, sure. They may ignore it for various reasons. So we don't know if for sure it's a false positive. And with what we're doing, it's a little bit tricky because we're not trying to please the world per se in general. We're mm -hmm. we're trying to make it more inclusive. So for us, bringing the number of examples down is very important because we can't just say uh, take everyone that accepted the the this alternative 
take their sentences and everybody they ignored and we just retrain our model right sure we actually have to do we have to go through a supervised process here so in that sense obviously just adding more data just makes the model bigger maybe mm -hmm. adds more computational resources but for us actually because we have to be supervised in this process it also is you know human human labor that the uh, factor that is right and that's why it was so important that elena managed to to bring down the number of sentences uh in this collaboration yeah um, i think it's it's you know what i really like elena did you want to add something yes sorry i i cut you there yeah, no, I, well, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I agree with Lucas. I just want to add what is also was very helpful uh, with the, uh, with Azure deployment because uh, I think we were like um, kind of pilot with Azure. Well, not was. I mean, because Hagen Fest before it was like uh, um, you can deploy it on AWS and we needed to de deploy in Asia and it was a lot of uh, like support from Hagen Fest to deploy this model in Asia. It was like, yeah. Yeah, we can help not just yeah. on, on, it's a good yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. We can help on, yes, on, the, on exactly. the machine learning part, you know, yeah, the modeling, but also et on develop, yeah, But yeah, yeah we, I think DevOps, we know a thing or two. DevOps, yeah. yeah, we know a thing or two about DevOps by, you know, yeah running those models on, on different clouds and uh, and on prep or for some customers so yeah i think it's it's uh you know to m my impression here is that it's a it's a very successful project so you know congratulations to the WiliWorks team for for doing this it's very lean i think i love the efficiency you know i love the fact that uh, you you really shrunk the the problem to something that you could you know manage uh, you know more easily and and iterate quickly on and I'm really happy that we could uh, we could help you do that so uh, again you know go uh, you know go check it out it's witty dot works uh, that's again I'm I'm <laughs> that's a good URL easy to to remember uh, and I want to thank obviously Lucas and uh, and Elena for taking time to to speak with us today and uh, we have time for some questions so don't be shy. You know, there are no silly questions. Um, I'm, I'm the only one allowed to ask silly questions. So you will ask the smart questions. Uh, so please go ahead, you know, just unmute yourself and, um, and you can ask Lucas or Elena or e even me if I can bring something to the table. Uh, ask, ask us anything, we're, uh, we're happy to answer your questions. So who wants to, who wants to go first? Okay, don't be shy. <clears throat> Oh come on! If you don't ask question, I was <laughs> questions. I will. <laughs> I'll keep speaking. Anything you want to know about sentence transformers or set fit or or hugging face or NLP? Right? I'm sure Elena can answer everything. Yes, it, what what I said in the beginning. So we started to. Uh, oh yeah, let me to... let me read the question because I, I ah, yeah. sorry, I don't think it will show yeah. up on the recording. Okay. So, um, okay, now it disappeared. Let me let me see. Okay, yeah, we have a, a question from uh, Charles. So uh, Charles wants to know: Do you classify sentences or words? So yeah, can can you you know because that's yeah. really important, right? It's actually yeah, the yeah. the key element. Yeah. Yes, exactly. We classify sentences. So this is, was like uh, how we moved because in the beginning we, we, we thought that we can just uh, extract a word embedding like for specific word and then use like uh, this cosine similarity. But then we see that it's not very accurate. So that's why like we, 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 we moved to like a different approach, not to uh, not to use like vanilla transformers for the for the word embedding but for the sentence embedding and the set fit library it's also kind of also based it's not like um use like one sentence it's used kind of it's it's used like pair of sentence and um, embedding so it's and also maxim uh, minimize yeah, minimize if it's uh, sentence are mean um, are close and mm -hmm. and maximize it if they are like uh, far away so it's i mean it's kind of uh, i mean very smart i would say very smart okay. approach all right, we yeah, have so a question it's, it's, from it's, it's, Vladimir. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you use a part of speech approach? A speech approach? approach. A do, POS, do you mean like, yeah, POS approach. Uh, do you mean from any transfer from speech to text or what do you mean speech approach? No, a part of speech, so, you know, using the using the nature of, uh, of each individual word, you know? Uh, 
Uh, hey, it's uh, a verb, yes, it's a part, noun. Ah, part of the speech, yes, of part course. Of speech, yes, yes, sorry. yes, exactly, part of speech. Yes, of course, in, that was our initial uh, initial algor algorithm. For example, we know, for example, a, a word uh, lead, I, or I don't remember. So it's like there are some, a few words that you need to highlight only if the verb or noun or uh -huh. adjective. So that we, we use, uh, like, uh, we, of course, we, when we analyze the text, we tag all uh, these old parts of the speech on every word, and we know that if it's like should be noun, we we, uh, we detect if it's noun or not. If it's noun, we highlight. If not, not we just keep it. But this is like I would say like easiest part because you can use like pre-trained model uh, for the part of the speech, yes, uh, and then uh, just filter through them. I mean, it's quite uh, easy approach. It, it doesn't really depends on the context. So in this case, you don't need, really need a transformer. Of course, you can use, for example, uh, in spices, they have also transfer, word transformers, uh, but uh, to make the model bigger and to have probably more precise uh, labeling. But in our case, it was we, we don't need actually transformers for the part of the pitch. It was enough just like simple machine learning pre-trained, I mean, models. OK, yeah. oh, we, have a really, we have a really interesting question uh -huh. from uh, Chantal. So mm -hmm. let me let me read it. How well does your model generalize? Does it flag non-inclusive words that are not yet in your database? And can use can you use these predictions to extend the database? So yeah, it's two two yeah, questions. It's, <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, yeah. This is like uh, right now. Uh, no, we 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 think that we can develop like to in this direction, but right now no. It's like uh, we only. Uh, uh like highlight and uh only words that we already know that we needed to be highlighted so it's okay. like because for this for this it's a very good question so but for this we need to uh collect more but anyway you need to know uh word or center or probably context when this word it's har harmful or bias or whatever so uh, uh, yeah i mean um, yeah yeah I mean, uh, let there me is also add something to it yeah. um yeah. So we we are, we are decidedly taking a, a more supervised approach in this mm -hmm. uh, because we feel, especially when you're dealing with bias um, uh, and offensive language and, and all these things, um, we wanted to take a very different approach than other things. We actually released today how we how we see ourselves, for example, interacting with something like ChatGPT, mm -hmm. um, which you know it's maybe on one end, you know, in in terms of just you know throwing a lot of data at it. Um, but we wanted to be a supervised approach, uh, mostly really to to manage the bias, but also so that we can, uh, as I explained in the beginning, that we can provide the re the relevant information for people to also understand what the issue is, right? Because we're not just trying to flag something and then leave you with no information about why and, and what the root bias is, sure, right? So, sure. Um, that's why we're taking this approach. I think. We'll see if we can evolve in a different direction or a more automated uh, approach in the future. Uh, but um, yeah, the approach we're taking is more laborious, I would say. <laughs> sure. um, uh, but but I think it's, it's I think it's very important to have AI that also takes this approach because I think the combination of of different approaches uh, I think is what would really create interesting results when we come to artificial intelligence and so. We're taking a very supervised approach um, because we think ethically and technically this this gives the best results for this very specific domain. Yeah, but like also to add because when they are talking about like large models, like like for example, currently there is a hype about ChatGPT three, but if you just go to the like Open AI website, it's it's written like they don't really detect by I mean they can don't really handle bias because I mean to handle all this like because we, uh, hidden i would say like bias you need to know what you what, what to what to highlight i mean you need to know this kind of words uh and uh, yeah even yeah even la because even large models they, they have problem with bias i mean and in uh, and uh, our vt works in principle it might be, it might work on top of the like uh, large models because in principle you can uh, uh, you you can use it on top of even chat gpt3 and see uh, what is uh, like what what is chat no oh, yeah that's a, that's generate. an interesting thing to try yeah. yes <laughs> yeah yes yeah and then you can see what is it's better how he like yeah i mean all right yeah. we have another question from martin um 
let me read it. So, have you applied domain adaptation to an existing model before fine tuning for classification? What do you mean by domain? Is it like a specific domain of uh, where this word used, or what do you mean domain? Uh, domain adaptation. So probably I'm not sure about. Uh, the Martin, can you can you clarify? Yeah. Oh, while while Martin updates the the question, let's do another one. So yeah, okay. uh, we have one from Gabriel. Uh, okay, so in the end, what is the, what what is the data set you need, and how big is it? Um, uh, yeah. I would say like, uh, uh, yes, uh, currently we don't, like it's not a huge data set. Uh, well, I would say like uh, in our data set, like for the all words that we highlighted, what I said, we have like 2,200 uh, in English and German or 500, yeah. And for, for the context dependent, uh, I would say like uh, we we have like uh, for, for, for currently we, we have only yeah, for, for English, we have, I think, uh, it's not big right now. I think it's just 200 data sets, okay. uh, 200 sentences, or probably, okay. not, well, a little bit more, yeah, 300, yeah. I mean, okay. it's not a huge one. But so this few, is like a really context dependent. A few yeah. quick follow-up questions from Gabriel. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any major differences based on the language? Yes, yes. Yes, Actually, you speak uh, German. Yeah. German is yeah, very different German, from yes, English. Yes, English. Yeah, because at the beginning we thought that we, we might use probably multi-language models that you can like use like a uh, translator right from uh, English to German, but no, it didn't work. So it's like we need to build model for German English English separately because, for example, if you're talking about German language, there are a lot of gender-related uh, words in German. It's like for 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 us it's just huge amount but if you're looking in english so it's well let's say like in german like just to understand the proportion like we have like 200 or five i don't know two three hundred words that's uh, in, gendered in german in english it might be just 20. i mean oh, it's I really see. like okay. different yeah uh, yeah and the last say, like, the last question big, from yeah. from yeah. gabriel uh and maybe that's one for lucas as well uh mm -hmm. are you planning to uh add new languages and looking, yeah, looking yeah, at obviously. Gabriel's name, I would I would think French is interesting, <laughs> but maybe that's a yeah, biased so, decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we're from Switzerland, so French is kind of an obvious uh, one in Italian yes, and Retro Romanche. So. I'm actually in the Retro Romanche area, uh, okay. which is a language 60,000 people speak, but probably the next language we add this year will be Spanish. Um, and okay. uh, with that, hopefully then uh, quickly following the other Latin languages, so French, okay. Italian um, right. are kind of the next topics. But we actually hope to yeah, continuously add more languages um, as we go. OK. All right. And we have an update from Martin. Thank you, Martin, for taking the time. So uh, have you done masked language modeling or similar on a large corpus of text to guide the embeddings towards mm -hmm. a certain perspective? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I read about this approach and I thought to, to try it, but finally we didn't because because it works very well I mean, with this and we just stick with this. But yes, in the beginning with, I thought about this, but with masked, yeah, but yeah, this is, yeah, finally didn't need this okay. for, for this for, for this purpose, but probably for another purpose we might need this, but yeah. All right. Finally we didn't. Uh, okay, we have. There's one for me. Uh, okay, question from Jane. I would like to know if any exciting projects are happening at Hugging Face. Of course, that's what we do. We only do exciting projects. Uh, so um, you know, again, in the interest of time, I would really encourage you to go and and check out our blog at uh, huggingface.co/blog, where we constantly update the community on you know new releases, new models, new partnerships, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but just follow us on on the blog, and uh, and and you'll see all the stuff that that we're doing, and hopefully we have we'll have more customer stories. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Do you have energy for one more, uh, Elena and Lucas? Yeah. <laughs> okay, one more, and then we'll call it a, an afternoon. So, um, do the fifteen sentences per word have a balance of positive and negative samples? between yeah. highlight and skip yes exactly that was the main uh, like uh, i would say like that that was the most important for the set fit model uh, this, I, I think it's a big advi uh, advice if you use like a few short 
uh, set, uh, like classif classification, it's better. Well, it's not just better. It's you, you have to. <laughs> it's, it's it's better to use balanced uh, data set, positive and negative samples. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it might be like seven, eight, but I mean, or ten, ten that we have. Like I said, like from from fifteen to twenty, we have. Yes, exactly. But it's balanced data set. That is okay. very important. Yeah, I think All we right. missed one question. One question. So. Oh, did I? Use, yeah, uh, uh, named entity recognition approach. Yes, that we we use. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, it was from Vladimir. So yes, we use it. Uh, for example, for the some of the board, for example, international. Uh, for example, we need to. Uh, it's for example, this is international uh, company like from from nobody, uh, for from nowhere. So you need to highlight because it's not real. I mean, it's, it's not a real international company. And uh, for example, if it's like a real international, I don't know, London or capital or something, something you, you need to highlight international. Uh, so it's like what we use. Yes, we use named entity recognition to recognize any geographical location, uh -huh. okay. uh, any names, or we also, I think, use uh, uh, to recognize uh, for the job aids a lot. Yeah, currently we use it like for, for, for title roles and all, all this stuff. Yes, we use this approach. Yes, of all course. Right. Yeah. Okay, I think we're done. So uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Lucas and Elena once again. Thank you for taking time to uh, to to speak with uh, with us today and answer all the great questions. Uh, I think you're building something really nice. And uh, again, I love the efficiency of the project. So well done. Looking forward to the next iterations. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today, uh, and uh, thank you very much again for the really cool questions. If you have more questions, you can connect on LinkedIn, send them my way, and uh, I'll, I'll share the I'll share them with uh, Elena and Lucas. And uh, last but not least, I would like to thank my colleague Florent, who is the machine learning engineer, uh, who supported uh, WittyWorks on this project, and apparently he did a good job because you seem to be a happy customer. And I would like to thank my colleague Violette, who, uh, who organized this webinar and uh, and uh, helped a lot with all the logistics. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more uh, more webinars in the future. And uh, well, until next time, you know, take care of yourself, and uh, and uh, we'll be seeing you. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks again. Yeah. Thank you, thank Julian. You. Invite <laughs> thank us. You. Thank bye you bye. very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.